By the time I finish these next 20 words, this morning's guest could be inside your computer and you'd never know it. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Holiday Inn West on the waterway next door to the newly opened Hard Rock Park. We're focused on the Computer Security Conference which was held here the end of last week and we're visiting with one of its featured speakers, John Kibler, the Chief Technical Officer with Advanced Systems Engineering Technology in Charleston, South Carolina. Good morning, John. Good morning. Thanks for coming back. Of course, you were with us last year about the same time for a full hour. Mm -hmm. I think we split you up uh, the beginning of the week and the end of the week. It was such a, a spellbinding uh, interview there, the topic there of something that, you know, as we talked about moments ago before kicking off, a lot of folks are worried that are not as concerned about things they don't know about, but this is something that folks really should know about. Yeah. This is just one place that ignorance will get you in trouble. Absolutely. I think just last week our producer came over to the hotel, spent a little time with you, and you showed her how easy it is, as a ethical hacker or otherwise, how easy it is to uh, to hack into somebody's uh, computer. Right. Share with viewers uh, a little bit about uh, your what, what you were trying to show her there and trying to explain to us. Well, what I did is um, gave her what we call a Trojan um, movie which uh, a lot of people download from these peer-to-peer -peer networks like the Zaz and eDonkey and what have you. And it wasn't a real movie what it claimed to be, uh, but instead it was a way of somebody being able to break into the computer, so they clicked on the movie to play it, and as soon as they clicked on the movie, I was into their computer. Uh, I instantly shut off their antivirus, downloaded a keystroke logger so that everything that um, got typed on the keyboard, I could record, you have logins, passwords, uh, email addresses, bank information, everything that got typed on the computer, you know, I instantly had. So, you know, I owned your computer and there was no sign whatsoever on the other side that anything that even happened. You know, all they knew is, oh, gee, you know, for some reason the movie didn't work. Mm, mm. And this happens on a regular basis? It's very regular. Um, it's estimated that um, anywhere from 10 to 30 percent of all the computers worldwide have been compromised like this at any point in time. Is that right? Yes. And then ultimately if folks get what they need, they just leave the computer? No. They uh, want the computer for its processing capability. They use it to send spam. They use it to do what we call denial of service attacks, uh, where uh, it's kind of like the old uh, mafia insurance scam, high tech, where you know the mafia would go around and say, you know, if you don't pay me insurance payments every month, I'll burn your building down. Mm -hmm. Well, what they do these days is say that uh, we'll attack your um, high-profile gambling site or porn site or whatever and knock you down for, you know, two, two or three days at a time. So you have no revenue unless you give us a cut of the revenue. Right. And they use all these compromised computers to do those types of attacks. Mm. And, you know, you have them doing attacks against governments and politicians, you know, anybody they don't like. And it's, you know, become an, an enterprise that not only organized crimes in, but they just arrested a group of um, kids in their late teens, early 20s, um, out in the West Coast that um, had apparently been going at it for several months, and they had managed to control over a million computers. No. Yeah. And um, um, they, ad you know, people advertise on some of these underground bulletin boards, and uh, you can get... Uh, about uh, three dollars um, a day per computer uh, for you know compromised computers, uh, renting them out to anybody that wants you know do whatever they want to with them. Is that right? So you got you can get uh, you know these young kids, uh, you know they can easily make tens of thousands of dollars a month doing nothing except going out and compromising computers and renting them out to other people. Now how would a, how would someone actually how would it work there? How would they get access to now, is this only for Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi? No, this, this or? is anything. Um, probably the biggest thing we're seeing uh, these days are attacks against uh, websites. Uh, the first one that really made large national news was called the Sammy Worm against MySpace, where it was really not uh, malicious, 
but somebody just wanted to see how many um, friends they could add to their friends list and just in a couple of hours if I remember correctly you know they added like a million people no and um, when I was doing my uh, research for this um, conference uh, one of the things I was looking for was an old version of the QuickTime movie player so I could show this particular way of compromising a computer so I typed into Google get QuickTime and the very first thing that came up was a paid for ad that said get QuickTime 2000 and it was from www.quicktime.com.cm mm. CM Cameroon Africa right. a bogus website and uh, I instead of clicking on the, um, the link I actually saved the link and looked at the content and the content if you had clicked on the link you would immediately get gotten downloaded with spyware and if you had gone to the website um, and actually did anything on the website you would have had even worse stuff downloaded and we didn't get far enough into the investigation but it looked like you know based upon the history of this particular group of people if you had actually gone out and downloaded the quick time that they were advertising you would have not only gotten quick time but you would have installed a whole bunch of viruses and other things um, on your computer that is terrible John yeah and there's um, one of the big antivirus companies has done a study and it was something like 10 to 15 percent of the paid placement ads on all the search engines are um, by these organized groups that are actually um, paying to advertise uh, links that will contaminate your computer. That is incredible. What can the big search engines do to well, uh, protect they, themselves? Uh, they they from, depend upon people uh, right. um, contacting them and reporting it. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it is a mess. Uh, and it's, you know, the average person, you know, doesn't have, you know, enough um, knowledge to even be suspicious of a lot of things. Right. Like I um, got a uh, phishing email recently that uh, uh, purported to be from eBay and the Power Sellers Club. And I've never sold anything on eBay, so immediately that was a red flag mm -hmm. to me. Right. But I went through all the standard uh, things where... You know, they tell you to mouse over um, all the links and look down at the bottom of your screen and see where um, it's actually going to. And, you know, if it, um, it claims to be from eBay and if you click on the link in the, down at the bottom it says it's eBay, well, then you're probably going to eBay. Well, this one was sophisticated enough that they use what um, they call a redirector that uh, once you go to a site, it immediately takes you to another site. So you clicked on the eBay link that it took you to eBay France, which then took you to a website that I'm, I'm not particularly familiar with called eBay Objects, it's somehow associated with eBay, which then took you to AOL, which then took you to somebody's compromised computer um, you, on a DSL connection somewhere on the West Coast. Mm. And wow. that, that's where you actually got this bogus website that tried to um, get your eBay credentials. That is incredible, John. Yeah, and I mean, it took me a couple um, hours studying it just to figure out what they were doing. Well, now, of course, for you, you've got clients, and I know you never go into who your clients are, but right. you go in to help clients out mm -hmm. to remove what viruses or spyware, malware mm -hmm. from their computers? Uh, yes, that's among the things I do. And I'll tell you what, a lot of the... Um, well, the FBI statistics say that about 80% of the computers they seize have malware on them that is not identified by any antivirus product that's on the market. And I'm seeing an increasing number of incidents where I'll get a customer call me up and say, we suddenly got uh, 20, 30 of this, anti uh, this virus that's on all these computers and they appeared overnight. How in the world did they get here? You know, come take a look. And when I get in and take a look at the computers, I'll say, oh, that's been there, you know, three to six months. It's just now that the antivirus companies have actually found it. Mm. Uh, I know I've seen some statistics from one of the antivirus companies that only makes um, antivirus products for the commercial marketplace. They don't supply it to the consumer. Right. And they said that they are finding 6,000 newly infected web pages a day. That means one new page every 15 seconds. Uh, and that's just the ones that they're finding. They are finding um, about a dozen new viruses, and I don't mean just you know a modification of an existing virus, but about a dozen new viruses every hour, you know, one every five minutes. 
and they are just the um, organized crime groups are just putting out this stuff so fast that the companies just can't keep up with it. I, I can't even fathom this. I'm trying to think. I think I may have asked you what should viewers be doing to protect themselves, but you're highlighting so much that just seems uh, over, too over, overbearing to overcome. Yeah, it, it is very, very difficult. Um, avoid, you know, a lot of the real popular places. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's almost ridiculous to say it, but, you know, uh, Avoid places like MySpace and Facebook and the um, big popular social networking sites where people can post content because that's where we're seeing the majority of the problem. Right. I know that's you know um, like you know telling kids that you know it's bad to smoke and you know, right, <laughs> you know sure. they're going to do it anyway. But you know uh, avoid you know these file sharing um, because you know that is um, you know a major source uh -huh. of this junk. Um, and, you know, you have to run antivirus, but that's really not enough anymore. Run antivirus, and for a viewer who doesn't go online a lot or doesn't know, what, what are some examples of, um, and should, I think you had highlighted when you were with us a year ago, John, that this should be running continuously. Running continuously. On your computer, right, as opposed and, to updating it every week at the same yeah, time. Exactly, yeah, you need to uh, update and update rapidly. Uh, but you need not only antivirus, but you really need the anti-spyware, um, the uh, host based firewalls, the firewall that comes with Windows just isn't strong enough, and you also need uh, something that does web content filtering, something like Web Washer or Surf Control, um, products that until recently have not been available to the um, end consumer that actually examine the content um, before it reaches your uh, web browser as it comes in over the network and attempts to block the bad stuff. And now, would folks be able to, how do they buy that? Do they buy it online, download it online? Does it then potentially become compromised when well, web washer or surf control are being downloaded? Well, you can buy them in most of the uh, big, real, uh, big box retail outlets, okay. or you can buy them online. Um, the question is, is, you know, what's on your box to start with? Right, sure. And, um, you know, for most uh, home users, if you're going to decide to lock down your computer, it's best to back up your data, back up only your data, wipe the system out, and just reinstall your Windows from your installation media, and um, don't go online until you, you have it locked down. The first place you go is the Windows update. Get your Windows updates and install them before you do anything else on your computer. Then put antivirus on, then put your um, you know, anti-spyware and everything else on, um, and at that point, you put your data back on, scan your computer, and uh, go from there. Mm -hmm. But you need to be vigilant. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, when when I know what I'm doing and I know where I uh, what to avoid, and I can get hit uh, with uh, websites trying to download malware onto my computer uh, a half dozen times in a week. You know that just um, shows you the magnitude of the problem.